When working with a database, in this example a MySQL database, and PHP, there are two supported ways of creating a connection, MySQL I and PDO. PDO, which stands for PHP Data Object, is the most recent and has the advantage of using common methods to connect to a wide variety of databases. PDO will be used in this video. Refer to the link shown on php.net for documentation about this connection object. To create a database connection, you will need four pieces of information. First, the database server name. Second, the database name. Third, the proxy user name. And fourth, the proxy user's password. In addition, we will add an error handling option to the connection to instruct the PHP engine of how we want connection errors handled if and when they occur. Begin by creating a PHP page and name it to indicate that it holds database connections. We will save it to a library folder where the website support files will be stored. In the file, create four variables to store the data previously mentioned, server, database, username, and proxy. Assign the appropriate values to each variable. In this video, the server name is localhost and the database name is Acme. The proxy user and password will have to have been created previously. The PDO connection requires a DSN variable to indicate the type of database we are connecting to and the server and database names. We will use two of our previous variables to provide the actual values. The use of PHP concatenation allows the values in the variables to be integrated as part of the DSN string. Next, add the error handling statement as values to a variable named options. We will do this in an array format with a single key and value. This error handling tells the PHP engine to create an exception if an error occurs. With all variables now in place, we will use a try-catch block to attempt to create the connection, and if it fails, how to handle that failure. In the try, we will create the connection and assign it to a variable. For testing purposes only, we will echo if it worked. This echo will be removed after testing. In the catch, we will modify the exception to be a PDO exception and echo a failure message from the exception class for testing purposes only. This echo will also be removed after testing. In your local environment, make sure the Apache and database servers are running. Then run the connection file in the browser. Depending upon our accuracy in writing our code and using the variables, we will see either our success or failure messages. If it fails, double check your code and compare it against the code shown in this video. If it works, I will intentionally break it to make sure my error message also works. When the failure message is echoed, it gives too much information. This information could be helpful to a hacker. Instead, we will create an error view that contains a generic error message and cause the connection object to redirect to the error view if the database connection fails. Test this by doing something to break the connection. Then run the code again. You should be viewing your generic error page. Repair the error in the code and comment out or delete the echo code in the try area. We will now wrap our connection object inside of a function for easier use later. On the line before the declaration of my variables, I will add the function keyword. It will be followed by the name of the function. Function names should describe what they do. 
In this case, I will name my function Acme Connect since it is a connection to my Acme database. After the name, include parentheses, followed by a left curly brace. This function requires no outside information, so no parameters are inserted between the parentheses. Move to the bottom of the catch area and add a right curly brace on the first empty line. In the try area, if the connection is successful, we will send the connectivity back to where the function was called from by using a return statement. I will format my code to adjust the indents to make the code easier to read. Compare your code with that shown on the screen. To test the function, I will create a new line of code that simply uses the function name. This is known as calling the function. If the function works, the screen will be blank. The object was returned, but we didn't do anything with it. If the function fails, the error page should be displayed. Be sure to comment out or delete the testing line that was just used and save your connection file. Because our connection is a function, this file could be used to create and store more connection functions if attempting to connect to other databases.